Archer's Garage, and and this time on Archer's Garage, we're going to kind of look at this machine. It's a Billy Goat. This is another 9.5 horsepower engine. I think we can fix this one, right? It kind of ran, didn't have a lot of compression, but it, it did actually run, right? With no carburetor, we got it to kind of turn over, spin, and it ran. So let me dig into it a little bit more. We know we had spark, we know we had compression, and it did kick and run. The valves probably haven't been adjusted ever. The oil is probably garbage. Um, yeah, you know, let's let's take it a little further. All right, everyone. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set this thing up for valve adjustment. Now I've already spun it over and given it a quick check. And I'm working on another video with this motor with a little different view to try to explain uh, really the whole thing about getting up to TDC and all that. So I'm not going to get too involved in this video. I just want to show you what I'm doing here on it. And hopefully when I get that video out, that should explain it even more. But again, just to repeat some of the stuff, we need to get it up to TDC. Now, a lot of people like to stick things in there. And you know, when I, when I do motors, like race motors and stuff like that, and I've done them in the past, um, we zero the motor. We zero, essentially, we zero everything out. So we bring the piston all the way up to TDC. We use a dial indicator to make sure that it is at TDC. And then uh, we actually lock the motor there, and so it can't move. Um, we can't do that here, right? It's too difficult to do. Some people try to stick something in there to see if the motor is up at TDC, uh, top dead center. Um, and so you have to go through the valve events to see what the valve events are and then you want to kind of find out well when is the motor up at TDC so let's do that okay so the first thing we want to look at is and let's see on the camera to my right which is you okay um, I'm trying to look down here a little bit more so you get a feel of it and let me be I can zoom you in a little bit more so down here the magnet is right here and I know it's going to be hard for you to see that because again I'm not set up to really show you all of this right here so the magnet is right here and it's straddling the armature you know on the coil and I've already gone over the event so I already know that I'm at TDC so I'm going to start from here so both valves are closed so now let's rotate it and you can see the cupping on the flywheel so we're going to go clockwise and the first thing you're going to see is an exhaust valve because right, it's already fired, so we want to get rid of the gases. And that's your exhaust valve. There it went. Now we're going to suck fresh air in. Or I should say air and fuel, or mix. There it goes. Now we're going to have a little bit of a compression bump here. It's where the va exhaust valve is going to just take a bow and open a little bit just to blow off a little bit. Now there's other reasons for that. It's not just about compression. It's about kind of supercharging and again I'll get into that in the other video now, there's a little bit of junk down there let me get a q-tip real quick a little bit of junk fell down in sorry but I want to get that out while I see it you know that's why I like to clean the motors really well because it's so easy right to get junk and debris in your motor and I can't really get in there you know, to get it out. Okay. All right. So it took a bow. Now, our magnet is down here. Okay. And it's coming up. We want to be over here. And it's coming up to that point. I'm actually going to bow you out a little. <clears throat> and here we are. Okay. So when the magnet is straddling it, that's pretty much TDC right there. So you can adjust your valves. And I don't ever see a situation where you would want to adjust the valves without doing the carburetor, doing the plug, doing the oil, and in particular, re you know, going over your flywheel, getting it all clean, and making sure it's the, the magneto is clean and gapped. I don't ever see a situation where you would just do the valves because they generally don't need adjustment. Um, they need it periodically in a service interval and associated with that service interval should be going over the rest of the motor. So 
there's no reason to stick anything into the spark plug hole because this is going to tell you where you are. Watching the valve events and seeing where the magnet is is going to tell you where you are. So it's just silly. I see guys, they just pull this off and they're like, I'm going to do a valve adjustment. Well, why are you doing a valve adjustment? You know, you shouldn't just be doing a valve adjustment right now. It just doesn't make sense. Something doesn't add up. Something's fishy with that. So maybe they're just showing you how to do a valve adjustment. That could be the case. But what I'm showing you is there's a bigger reason for why you should be doing your valve adjustment. And when it's brand new, they say 100 hours. But most of the time, that's not even the case. But if the machine is a few years old and it's been in service a lot, that's a good time to do it. And it's a good time to go through everything. So let's get started. Now I've already checked this out and the spec for most of these motors is all the same. The valve should be the same. They list between four and seven. Um, I tend to go, I've seen a lot of motors of five and eight. And what I like to do is, is a, a four and seven um, or a tight five and a tight eight or a seven. Now it ranges, you have some leeway in between so you have some clearance within the clearance right there's some allowable tolerance where it can be out so if you set this to four and you set this to six or seven right you'd be okay intake should be a little tighter i feel than the exhaust now in these motors they 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 tell you you can set them the same but again they give you some tolerance a window plus or minus a thou or two here and there and i stuck my five thousandths in here and boy is it loose i got a six in there and I even got a seven in there and it is super loose and the seven goes right in no problem into the exhaust too so let's get the five thousandths out and let's make an adjustment so step one all right it's a 13 millimeter and this is a torx but you can use an allen is let's loosen it up okay and then we're going to take our allen and turn in the center and the reason for that is the center, it's not the outer nut that makes the adjustment. It's the center because the center is pushing essentially is where the cup of the push rod is. So that's what's taking up your clearance. That's what's pushing down against the push rod and on your ultimately the cam lobe. So that feels better, right? We're going to go a little bit more, just a scotch. And then we're going to just snug it up again, all right? And just wiggle it, just, just to make sure it's not cocked or anything, because there's a lot of clearance there. I kind of want a tight five. Yeah, I'm feeling it, starting to feel it, but it's not right yet. So let's bring it in a little bit more. Let's, and again, I'm just snugging these, because you want to take up the clearance within the nut and the adjuster. Otherwise, you won't get an accurate measurement. You'll be imparting that extra bit of clearance into your adjustment if you're not, not snugging it again. So we're gonna hold the center while we loosen the nut so we don't lose our adjustment. And I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit more and feel it. Just make sure everything is parallel. It's starting to get there, it's not quite there. I kinda of want like a tight five. You know, really snug. So it's more like a four. It feels good, right, like that. We're gonna go just a little bit more because when we tighten everything down, Try to hold it. That should do it. Now let's snug it up a little bit more. Yeah, that's starting to get there. Yeah, that feels about right. Now let's <clears throat> let's tighten it. Let's turn everything in. <clears throat> Jiggle it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you know what? I could now that I've tightened it, it's put back some clearance in here. Okay. So we want to remove that as well. Okay, go a little bit more. Let's loosen it. Tighten it good. And let's see. It's sneaking up on it. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of holding on to the tool. And I'm not fighting it, but it feels good. So let's make sure she's tight. Yep. She's good. All right, now we're going to go to the other one. We're going to do that as a nice snug seven. Let's get out our seven thousandths. 
Okay. Turn it in. Oh yeah, she needs more. Loosen it up. A little snug. Yeah, yeah, she's starting to get there. I'm gonna go just a little bit more because I wanna be on the, the nice secure end of everything. Nice because when we tighten this really good. That's it. All right, let's give it a good snug. How does it feel? It feels tight. It's very easy to depress these valve springs. Let's jiggle it. Feels a little bit tight. Yeah, yeah, it's too tight. Okay, so let's open it up a little bit. Take a little bit off. Hold the center. We're just going to pull a little bit off. Let's tighten it. <clears throat> Let's feel it. Yeah, that's, that feels good. That's nice. That feels nice. Let's make sure it's tight. All right, now let's spin the motor over <clears throat> one more time and we're going to see the exhaust valve go. Okay. Now we're going to see the intake. We'll see a little bump on the exhaust. Let's watch the magnet come up. The magnet's right there, right where we need it to be, straddling the armature. We'll take our 7,000 since that's out. Let's feel it. Okay, I think it's a little too tight. Pull a little bit of, add a little bit more clearance to it, just a little bit, just just a tiny little bit, because it's, it's when you tighten that nut, it has a tendency to pull the center in, but it also pulls uh, uh, any lash out. Oh, that feels perfect. Okay, so we're good here. Let's make sure it's tight. Let's go to a five. Oh yeah, that feels nice. And we're done. Okay, we're gonna put the cover back on. <clears throat> All right, so we're done with this, guys, and I think the next thing we're gonna to go to is we're gonna remove the oil from the machine and make our mess now and then we're going to do a little bit of cleanup of the body and a little wire wheeling and a little uh, a few other little tricks so we'll be back in a bit